bang associated with the um, caution and warning them. Okay, as we have an apparent serious oxygen leak. Four, three, two. All right. So um, hello and welcome to Failure to Launch, the space history podcast where we take you through all of the mistakes, failures and explosions that made modern space exploration possible. Uh, normally, this is where I'd say that my name is Quinn and I'm here with my friends, Chris and other Chris. But this is hopefully the start of something new to supplement those normal episodes. The idea here is to cover small space topics that we really couldn't stretch into full episodes or things that aren't necessarily um, like funny and entertaining. Um, if people like these, maybe it becomes bonus content once a month, once every two weeks, however it works out. And this is also just to kind of get content out there if, uh, if there has been a lull in main episode recordings. I don't want anyone to get the idea that this is going to replace any of that. We are still um, trying to get uh, all of those episodes out, and we do have a lot of very fun guests and interviews lined up. but. And I figured what better way to start us off with this than a story that first started cropping up a few weeks ago, which is the Uranus Battalion and the Russian rocket scientists being sent to fight and die in Ukraine. Now, the Ukraine war and the many self-inflicted wounds it has caused for Russia's space industry is definitely something that we're going to cover in depth in future episodes. Stuff like rockets and satellites being held hostage, Russia's attempts to hijack a German space telescope, or uh, Dmitry Rogozin getting fired from his job, going to Ukraine, and then literally getting his ass shelled. All of that is still coming, uh, but I felt it important to cover the Uran Battalion because it sort of shows some of the moods in Russia now and in the immediate future. Uh, the priorities are such that Russia is retraining rocket scientists to be light infantry. So first off, what is happening? Roscosmos, Russia's version of NASA, has created a new military unit called the uh, Uran Battalion, named after Uranus. Uh, back in late May, we started seeing ads for the battalion being posted on Roscosmos websites with wages far above what a normal engineer can make there. Now, why is this happening? I've seen a few people look at this story and crop it up to Russia being so desperate for troops that they're now forcing valuable engineers and scientists onto the front lines. That's not quite true, and the reality is a lot more complicated. Basically, flashback to late 2022 and Russia, in a bid to fill out its troop numbers, launches what Putin calls a partial mobilization, forcibly recruiting upwards of 300,000 men into the Russian army. Um, and this does partially work. It gives Russia the manpower to create a lot of new units, give them questionable at best training, and rush them to Ukraine often without equipment, weapons, or food. Uh, but it also massively destabilized Russia. In just the weeks after the mobilization was announced, hundreds of thousands of Russians fled to neighboring countries like Georgia, Armenia, and Kazakhstan. We don't know exactly how many, but it's likely more than double the amount who were actually mobilized. Back here halfway through 2023, and Russia is still facing manpower problems, especially after a winter offensive that produced tens of thousands of casualties and not much real gains. They need ways of filling out their fighting forces, but know that pulling the trigger on another bigger mobilization could throw the country into chaos. Their solution to that, at least so far, has been to build a wide network of volunteer units and mercenary groups that often advertise very high wages for anyone who agrees to fight in Ukraine. Some of these groups already existed, like the infamous Wagner Group, while many were created just in the last few months. Uh, a particular trend you're seeing is for different Russian companies and oligarchs to create their own militias that recruit exclusively from their employees. For example, the Russian state-owned gas company Gazprom owns two PMCs, a Stream and Torch, who work closely with a third called Redoubt. And it gets weirder. Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu, the guy who is in charge of the Russian military, he has his own volunteer mercenary group, which he named Patriot. Even Dmitry Rogozin, the infamous ex-head of Roscosmos, got in on the action. He leads a group called the SARS Wolves and claims to operate dozens of futuristic unmanned tanks. And this is where we circle back to the state space corporation Roscosmos, Russia's version of NASA. Because all the way back in October of last year, they decided to start their own military unit. The Uran Battalion, named after the planet Uranus, aims to recruit around 400 Roscosmos employees and work with the Russian military to get them trained and equipped. And as crazy as giving up a job building rockets to go fight in trench warfare sounds, Uran is offering a very big benefit. Ads posted on the internal Roscosmos website and the sites of their subsidiaries promise recruits monthly pay of around 4,000 US dollars. 
which is more than four times what the average Roscosmos employee makes. They, on average, make around 780 US dollars per month. Now, I mentioned that Uran has reportedly been around since last October, but we're only really seeing news about it now. And that's partly because until recently, Uran wasn't a quote unquote official Roscosmos project. They were actually established by a Moscow MMA gym called the Sword and Shield that ran military style training drills. Early on, Roscosmos seems to have just let them post ads around the office. But, and for this I'm going to quote from an article uh, from the Financial Times, more recently, Uran's glossy posters, which look like adverts for a computer game featuring heavily armed Russian soldiers, have begun to sport the Roscosmos logo and advertise specifically for fighters for frontline duty in Ukraine. This likely means that Roscosmos and its new head Yuri Borisov are taking a much more active role in the battalion. And since we mentioned their advertising, I want to take a second to talk about it, because they've definitely been upping the production value of this stuff. You can like see examples on Uran's YouTube and Telegram channels. Um, their first video, dating back to October 28th, features a masked soldier talking about his kit in an office setting while a bunch of other soldiers in the background pretend to look busy and do, like, intelligence stuff. It then ends with something that legitimately looks like a Battlefield Games class lineup. All kinds of soldiers with futuristic kid in action poses. Uh, some of them are even wearing the unit's apparently trademark airsoft helmet with skull motif, and one is edited with meme laser eyes. Above this is the tag for the motherland, and then it clarifies right underneath that that the motherland in question is indeed Russia. It's also at this point that I should probably point out that they call their members Imperial Stormtroopers and have kind of like a knockoff Star Wars vibe going. Going over it, a lot of their earlier videos are like this. Uh, one is basically the same, except it talks about first aid equipment, uh, while another shows off the battalion's drone arsenal, except they show American Predator drones, and they try to pass off Ukrainian drones destroying Russian vehicles as Uran victories. So, all of these old videos are posted between October and December of 2022. Then, there's a five-month gap, and Uran suddenly comes back with much better edited videos that now directly mention Roscosmos and have the company's logo slapped all over. Quoting from the Financial Times, Wearing helmets marked with Russian flags, the men leap from tanks to a Daft Punk soundtrack made for a sci-fi movie, brandishing Kalashnikovs and rocket launchers. Then comes a Hollywood-style voiceover. State Corporation Roscosmos calls on you to join the Uran Volunteer Battalion, where you will be trained for victory in this great war. Generally, they seem very proud of their tank, because it's the focus of this ad and a lot of their other ads. The ad itself is mostly soldiers doing action shots around the tank in a field, and it ends with a shot of them posing on top of around the tank, along with a fat guy wearing a cape with a painted on facial scar and holding the signature airsoft skull helmet. Finally, what sets this apart is it has the tagline, Roscosmos calls you to join the Uran Motor Rifle Battalion. So it's now not just an MMA club posting signs, it's Roscosmos itself doing the advertising and calling on its own employees to sign up. Now, if this has turned into me just talking about how dumb these videos are, I apologize, and that's not what I want this to be about. Uh, I'm focusing on the advertisements because I want to keep it in people's heads what this is for. Russia's space agency, a state-owned company with 170,000 employees and an annual budget of more than 5 billion US dollars, is attempting to convince scientists and engineers to fight in Ukraine, and the carrot is good pay and knockoff Star Wars uniforms. Now, I'm not exactly a connoisseur of this kind of stuff, I don't know what makes it good propaganda or bad propaganda, but this has actually gotten pretty good reviews from Russian war bloggers like Rybar, who called the videos magnificent and a model of how Russian volunteer battalions should recruit, saying, quote, All this does not guarantee high efficiency of the unit, but at least it provides an influx of volunteers, reducing the likelihood of a new wave of mobilization. But all of that was about a month ago, when these slick new videos started coming out, and it was becoming clear just how connected Uran and Roscosmos are. Now, the good news is that it looks like Rybar was wrong. According to the Russian independent Siren News, Uran has had a hard time recruiting, and practically no one has signed up except for the 250 soldiers the battalions had since last December. And that's actually with them bending the rules to try and get more volunteers. When it first started, Uran had an age cap of 48. Now that's slipped to anyone under 60. Uh, similarly, Roscosmos appears to be playing fast and loose with security clearances. Basically, a lot of Roscosmos employees have Russia's equivalent of top secret clearances, and this means they aren't even allowed to leave the country. Like, they have all of Russia's space secrets in their head, so it's important to keep them safe. Um, however, when one employee asked what would happen if they joined up to Uran and then were captured, 
They were told, quote, in isolation from production and the team, the employees of the center do not pose a danger. So on top of trying to send some of their best and brightest to go and fight in Ukraine, Roscosmos is now seemingly content to have them captured and their secrets shared with the enemy, or I guess the world. Now, even though a source in Roscosmos told Siren News that they'd not heard of anyone signing up, they also said that if the positions weren't filled voluntarily, some employees would be forced to join until Uran Battalion reached its goal of 400 recruits. And the sad thing is that Roscosmos might just be able to afford losing these people. Even before the war, Roscosmos was on a downward track, and despite facing no direct sanctions from Western countries so far, its launch cadence has dropped dramatically. According to space journalist Anatoly Zak, Roscosmos launched 25 rockets in 2021. In 2022, they only launched 22. Now, more than halfway through 2023, they've launched 8 total and only have 6 scheduled. So, a total of 14. That is a historic low. Though it still cooperates with NASA and other space programs on the ISS, Russia is losing ground quickly in the space industry. Uh, also, they have made it clear that they intend to pull out of the ISS, so even those launches are soon going to dry up. Meanwhile, science missions like the Luna 25 moon lander have been continually delayed due to parts shortages and underfunding. Uh, they are hoping to launch in August of this year, uh, 2023, but then they were also hoping to launch in October of last year. Removing the ISS launches, the only reliable uh, Roscosmos business is launching Russian military satellites. And in the future, these launches will likely be enough to keep Roscosmos alive and operating at a low baseline, but it's likely they don't need 170,000 people for that. Throw in the fact that making militias is now the favorite way for Russian oligarchs to show their loyalty to Putin, and you can see why this makes sense for the people running Roscosmos. So, yeah. Unfortunately, that is all of the information we currently have on uh, the Uran Battalion and its cooperation slash ownership uh, with Roscosmos. It is something that I hope, uh, as more information comes out, to be able to cover in the future. However, uh, that is all we are going to talk about today. As far as the subject matter, um, I recognize that I am personally very biased uh, in this conflict and that we collectively as a show do not want this to become our main subject matter. However, we felt it important to cover this topic kind of as it happens because we feel it is incredibly important to the space industry. In short, and this situation may change, the space program that has inherited most of the personnel and hardware from the first successful space program in history is now willingly sending its best and brightest to die in a conflict. I hope you've enjoyed this short, and I will talk to you again soon in the next episode of Failure to Launch.